Well, back on the bench is the Radio Shack Realistic SA100B Solid State Amplifier. Like I said, it was in the 70 through 72 catalog. And then after that, they come up with the 100C, which had a totally different amplifier design. It did away with the output transformers and uh, was more of a conventional complementary type output stage. But for this amplifier, I want to finish the recap. Like I said in the previous video on this, you might want to watch that if you haven't seen that yet. That uh, I still think it needs capacitors changed, the rest of them. But I replaced some of the problem caps first. I didn't have the caps I needed, but now I have some caps with a proper lead spacing to replace them. And uh, a bunch of small ones too I don't have out yet, but going to change everything else, all the rest of the electrolytics. And I'll proceed with a power test to see if it makes any difference. Mainly it's the uh, power supply cap that will make any difference. And I don't know which one will fit. I have a thousand microfarad here. I really would like to increase higher than that. The next higher I have is this Nichicon 4700. But that might be too big. I don't know. We'll just have to see what will fit. Okay, well, I'm not going to say a lot in this video. I'm just going to do the cap change and get on with the power test. Well, it looks like I'm going to have to use this one because this one is just too big. It won't fit in there. I'm going to change these that I just changed the other time. Only because the lead spacing is correct using these. These I had to bend the leads and they're kind of flapping in the breeze there. I mean it's fine they would work but I would rather just put the right ones in. Same value and uh, of course I got all of these little caps here. The blue ones are already new so I don't have to worry about those. Uh, these I suspect are weak the rest of them might be okay, but I found so many bad caps, I might as well just do them all, so on my way. Here's what I've done so far. I put all the large capacitors in. On the bottom of this board, this is all flood fill with ground plane copper, so I was able to drill a hole and put a radial lead vertical mount capacitor in there. So that gives me options for better values. I don't have to use that 1000 microfarad. Here's the old one. 1000 microfarad for a power supply cap. You know, this isn't a large amp, but, you know, stereo amp, it's a little small. I, I would think a 2200 or 3300 would work. You don't have to put a gigantic 10,000 microfarad in a little amp like this. I put a uh, 3300 Rubicon in there and uh, these are supply bypass for the preamp stages. They had 470s before which were probably adequate but it doesn't hurt to go up to a thousand here as well. Like I said I'm using a thousand microfarads on the outputs I wouldn't go any higher with this amp. These transistors are not that powerful. One amp transistors. You know, if, uh, if these are completely discharged and you turn on the amp with a a load connected, uh, there'll be a, a shot of current going through these and the transistors to uh, charge these up to one half the supply voltage which is around 11 volts and it's going to take a, a larger shot of current through those transistors so I, I wouldn't go higher than 1000 microfarad in this amp. Okay now on to the fun part. All of these little capacitors have to pay attention to the negative side. I'll probably put a little dot on the board. It's really crowded in here so it's going to be some work. 
Okay, it is completely recapped as far as all the electrolytics. What is that? 15 caps, I think, including the two I did the other day. But I redid these, of course. And it's all done. This little amp sounds good. Okay, let's take it to clipping. There's clipping. Back that out. Let's turn that down so we can see the spectrum. It's going to have those two uh, second and third order harmonics like it did before. But we're getting 3.37 volts. RMS into 8 ohm loads, both channels driven. 3.37 squared divided by 8. 1.42. So we didn't really make any improvement, maybe the slightest. But we're getting closer to that 1.5 watt. The amp was just not designed to put out any more than that I don't think okay here is the frequency response wow it shot way up and shrunk down now this amp does have a loudness feature built into the volume control it's not defeatable so you saw that shoot up I do have the volume control way past that setting but still you're gonna get some of it but it's uh, once you get by that, it's pretty flat. Twelve kilohertz. It does. Uh, it's actually growing a little bit. It does have this crazy uh, tone control. I just have it fully tuned out so all the high frequency goes through. It's starting to ramp off. Well my music player does ramp off right at the end so I don't think that's the uh, the amplifier. Let me res well you can't see it. Tune that way down. There you saw it shoot up and then come back down. So the frequency response is fairly flat except for that built-in loudness feature. That kind of does compensate for those capacitors. You know, has the uh, output coupling capacitors that will roll off. So loudness does help with that. Except that high volumes, it's, it'll push it into clipping quicker because, you know, that you can't really make up for the lack of output swing in the amplifier with the loudness feature. So, so that's the SA100B amplifier completely finished. New set of caps in it. Changed out that one wonky resistor in the last video. Got it working pretty good. Sounds good. And But again, it's just not a powerhouse. I was hoping we could get around or maybe a bit over a watt and a half out of it but and yeah, we're pretty close so i'll wrap this up thanks for watching